Praise the Lord. I'm so very glad you're checking this out. This is number 47 in the Race, Religion, Racism series of Pastor Fred Price in what I respectfully call a monumental groundbreaking event in learning the truth of American history and the truth of how the American church propagated racism in all facets of life. But Christianity is about Christ and not those who aspire to tell lies about it or use it to manipulate or use it to profit or use it to malign. All facets of life are relevant to Christianity. So therefore, nothing is off limits. Now, let's hear from Pastor Price. Now, I'd like to keep you updated on things. You remember when we had res resignations on our board and so forth and so on? Well, this is not like that, but this has to do with our television program. And uh, we received a letter. We were on television on the, it's called God Christian Channel, Europe Limited. We were on a European satellite Christian channel. And uh, we received information. Well, actually, we received a letter. Apparently, apparently we received some communication from these people, and our people responded. This is the response that we made in January. Says, uh, dear Mr. Spencer, this is a response to my conversation on Tuesday, January 27, 1998, with Miss Kate Killery regarding our ever increasing faith program. Miss Killery informed me that our scheduled programs on race, religion, and racism were not aired because the content <laughs> did not comply with the Independent Television Commission (ITC) standards. According to the ITC guidelines you mailed to us, dated August 21st, we saw nothing that would have prohibited you from airing these programs. Your policy states that if a program contravenes the ITC guidelines, then CCE will notify us in time to respond. We were not notified. Only unhappy viewers informed us that the program did not air. CCE was paid in advance to air our programs according to the schedule we had agreed upon. CCE did not comply with this agreement. We are therefore requesting a refund for the program that did not air. Sincerely yours, Eddie Stevens, Senior Account Representative. Then we received a response. That letter was dated January 30. We received a response February 20 of this same year. And it says regarding pull programs. Eddie, I've checked with Graham Spencer and confirmed you were not advised beforehand of the problems with the programs. To that end, CCE will refund to Faith One the cost of the two programs. In order to do that, you will have to send Janice Thompson, our financial controller, your bank details so a wire transfer can be arranged. We would need bank name, phone number, mailing address, sort code, account number. You can fax her at so-and-so. Again, we are sorry to have ended ever-increasing faith on such a sorry note, Kate. Then in March, now this, this, all this was in the first of the year. Now in March, we received regarding, we received a letter or a facsimile, fax trans, trans, uh, uh, tr transmission, yeah, yeah, <laughs> duh, uh, regarding ITC regulation. Dear Eddie, I am faxing you on behalf of Graham Spencer, head of productions, who is out of our, the office until May 18th. He has asked me to inform you that ITC, the Independent Television Commission, the regulatory body who sets the guidelines for output on the Christian channel, have asked us to look out for programs, listen, look out for programs containing any political bias or what could be construed as such, as this would contravene ITC regulations. Please, when producing programming, be very aware of this, as we will not be able to transmit programs which contain any hint of political bias. The other matter of mention is that when making dramatic constructions, these must be clearly labeled as such, again, to comply with ITC regulations. Thank you for your help in these matters. Your sincerely, Lucy Cook, production assistant. I didn't know there was anything political about the race, religion, and racism. Political? Hmm. Interesting. We received another letter. 
Oasis Network, Oasis Radio Network, Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> Station KMSI FM and KNYD FM, and I was informed by our uh, my uh, media head that we've been on this station for 11 years and never had any problem. Uh, Faith One Advertising, et cetera, et cetera. Attention, Eddie Stevens. Dear Eddie, as you know, I had a phone conversation with you on Thursday, March 12, regarding ever-increasing faith. You said that you would talk with Michael Evans about our challenge and that you or his or him would call on Friday the 13th. I never heard from you regarding the program material question. Program material question. We have saved some of your recent broadcast tapes and will be submitting them in your regular time slot until this issue is settled. You may contact Becky Groth, David Warren, or me as to what you want to do about the future of your program on Oasis Network, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Please refer to conditions. Sincerely, David Ingalls, General Manager. Now, that was on March 14. On March 18, we responded. Uh, dear Mr. Bagen, Bag, Bagenstos, please forgive me for mispronouncing your name. I don't know. I did the best I could. Pursuant to our phone conversation today, please accept this letter as our notice to cancel the Ever Increasing Faith program in association with KMSI FM Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and KNYD FM in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. The date of our last broadcast for both stations is March 13, 1998. We regret the necessity to take this action. However, our client is not able to remain on KWSI and KNYD because of their refusal to follow the ever-increasing Faith Ministries radio broadcast schedule. Thank you for all of your past service and conditions. Now, it's interesting, 11 years, never had a problem, never heard from them, always pay our bills. It wasn't until the Race, Religion, and Racism series came on that apparently, apparently, remember about appearances? There was a problem. I have another letter here. Notice of rejection. <laughs> August 17, 1998. Michael Evans, Faith One Advertising. Dear Mr. Evans, it is my duty to notify you that the current ever-increasing faith series on racism will no longer be aired on our station. According to the terms outlined in your contract, you have 72 hours to, su to supply us with replacement tapes. The reason for this move stem from unbiblical teachings. <laughs> the reasons for this move stem from unbiblical teachings, unchristlike attitudes, and especially unchristlike language on the part of Dr. Price. <laughs> See, to say nigga is unchristian. For a black man to say. But it's all right for the white folks to call us niggas. And that's all right. We, we, we just letting it all hang out. See, that's been the problem. Although our staff and management agree that racism is a sin, that racism needs to be addressed strongly today, and although we actively support promise keepers and other reconciliation efforts that arise, we also realize that the right sermon topic presented in the wrong manner is still the wrong message. Our stations also do not allow foul language. What have I said that's foul? Except nigger. And I hear that all the time from other people. I don't, I don't, that's foul language. It's amazing. The white man's coming to the defense of the black man, considering that nigga is a foul language if I use it. But it's all right for white people to call black folks nigga, and then that's not foul language. Our stations also do not allow foul language, including but not limited to words that are intended to show disrespect or denigrate minorities even if the words are used by that particular racial group for shock value. It is our belief that if the Lord truly saves you, he saves your mouth as well. <laughs> K 
Count on, brother. It is our belief that if the Lord truly saves you, he saves your mouth as well. I agree. If the Lord truly saves you, then how can you enslave a whole race of people, call yourself a Christian, and enslave them because they're black? Then Jim Crow them even after the government set them free and emancipates them, you still instituted Jim Crow law to keep them from their rights. And those were supposed to be safe folk. It is you people that put in God we trust on your money. Not black folk didn't do that, white folk did. Yes, I'm mad at the debt blame hypocrisy of so-called Christians. You're absolutely right. Okay. Okay. What nerve? That is incredible. Nigger is a bad word. But they invented it. It is our belief that if the Lord truly saves you, he saves your mouth as well. The, the statements by Dr. Price that everybody talks that way is, in private is not only false, but is not held by thousands of born-again believers, and especially not by Christ Jesus. I never said every single person that was a Christian, but you, 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 you white folks know you all talk that way. I don't know. You know, we ain't going to ever get this thing straight now because you folks are never going to face the reality of it. You're never going to face it. Future series, future series which repeatedly use foul language, including words which denigrate minorities. I use the word to denigrate minorities. That's because I'm a majority person, right? Future series will repeat which repeatedly use foul language, including words which denigrate minority, will likewise be pulled and require replacement tape. Sincerely, E. Scott Argento, preg uh, program director, WJYP, WSCW, South Charleston, West Virginia. <laughs> now, here, that was on August 17th. On August 19th, we responded. Mr. Scott Argento, WJYP slash WSCW, PO Box, etc., South Charleston, West Virginia. Dear Scott, I am in receipt of your notice of rejection. It is unfortunate that you feel the way you do. It is, however, understandable. Secular stations have submitted no such rejections. The church has been the biggest proponent of racism in the country. Therefore, as Christian radio stations, WJYP slash WSCW, are quite in character with the church community at large. <laughs> Dr. Price's messages are for them that have ears to hear. You will find in the weeks following the cancellation of the ever-increasing faith program just how many people the race, religion, and racism series were blessing. The following is indicative of the kind of responses the vast majority of people have. Quoting a letter, I applaud you in your effort to eradicate such a hideous crime in the body of Christ called racism. It should have never been a foundation stone in the church in America, but it has, and thank you for exposing it, especially among those that have said to have had the word as, as our foundation. Pastor Price, about three weeks ago in May, we had some friends of ours from Portland, Oregon stay with us as they were attending a spiritual warfare conference in Dallas. As they met and have all types of manifestations and prayer and all, it was interesting to hear that some of the Argentine evangelists were leading the people in prayers of forgiveness for the racial crimes against blacks which they had committed and caused the American brethren to do so also. 
I guess those that accuse you of splitting the body of Christ are those who really are not as in touch with God as they say they are and perhaps are more concerned about financial repercussions than the truth they deny. I am not coming from the manifestation standpoint because some of that is questionable. But what moved me was these people are revival seekers and have appeared to want more from God. The Lord showed them that want the best from him ran into this immovable object that they will know we are Christians by our love. Thank you, Pastor Price, J.D., Word of Grace Church, Dallas, Texas. It's one thing, and then our, our, uh, my, my writer goes on. It's one thing to believe that racism is a sin and quite another to actually do something about it. You admit that racism needs to be addressed strongly today, but nowhere else in the Christian community can you find it addressed more strongly than by Dr. Price. Amen. I have not signed, I have not signed your waiver of the need of a telegram to inform us of your intention to reject our program. You are not rejecting the program, but the entire series of programs currently in excess of 43 hours in duration. Therefore, you are in effect refusing to abide by the terms of the contract and are in effect canceling the airing of the ever-increasing paid broadcast, such is your prerogative. We will process your station invoice in the same manner and time frame as always. That is upon receipt of a notarized affidavit of performance that all programs invoice have in fact aired. Signed, sincerely, A. Michael Evans, Jr., General Manager, Faith One Advertising. The only stations that have canceled our program have been Christian stations, either television or radio. Is, is that, uh, doesn't that, I mean, isn't that, isn't there a, I mean, doesn't it appear like, I mean, Christians, the only ones that have canceled a program. All those other years, we were fine. Till we got down to exposing, and then all of a sudden, that's foul language. They ain't ready. They ain't ready to face it. Business as usual. Jesus ain't never coming back. He won't be able to. Absolutely unbelievable. All Christian stations. Wow. So let me interject a little bit on this. Now, Pastor Price said he got rejection letters. This coming from churches. Okay. This coming from supposed uh, people who are supposed to be opposed to racism that are supposed to be in line and pretty much on the same level and same wavelength, be it Christian, as Pastor Price. But yet, he's getting rejection letters, letters saying that uh, his teaching is unbiblical. What's unbiblical about uh, racism. What is so unbiblical about prejudice? Hmm. You know what? And, and I would say that those who oppose the teaching are prejudiced or, or, or racial themselves. Wouldn't you agree? And if those who feel that same way, I'm asking you also, wouldn't you agree? But here's the thing. Some 30 plus years later, 30 plus years later, we're having the same thing. I'm seeing pretty much the same type of content saying that Dr. Price is... Um, what he's teaching what, or what he taught back then is not biblical. Or they're saying that he needs to, um, 
he needed to stay on point as far as talking about Christianity. And really, if you, the thing is, right versus wrong is Christianity. Let me say it again. Right versus wrong is Christianity. It's Christianity. It may be coming in a different topic. But anytime you have a subject of right versus wrong. Holy versus unholy. Good versus evil. Truth versus a lie. We're talking about Christianity. So how can you say it's unbiblical? How could they back then say it, it's unbiblical? But see, here's the thing. When you hold somebody accountable, when you hold their feet to the fire, they start to cringe. They start to shake. They want to point fingers, not back at themselves, but at you. That's what they like to do. That's what they do all the time. And like I said, 30 plus years later, we're still getting those same results. But now they can hide behind social media. They can hide behind a fake name. They can hide behind um, pushing a button or clicking. They can hide behind whatever. So now it's even more easy for them to um, claim Christianity, but really they, they're given a false narrative and it's not Christianity. It, it's their evil ways in opposition to Christi Christianity. <laughs> and then for them to say that he used foul language Again, you fast forward 30 plus years later, foul language, okay. And, and, and <clears throat> don't get me wrong, I hate the N-word. I hate it. I despise it. But he mentions it for emphasis. And clearly, he, his point was taken and his point got across. But then they wanted to throw it back at him. But but you look at today. You can say all sorts of words, curse words, on the internet, on regular TV, that you could not say or say um back then, 30, 30 years ago, you couldn't even say these these words. But now you can say them. And I don't have to allude to, to which ones you all know. You all know. Because the, the, I'll, I'll take it this way. The same type, these same words, would you use in the, would you use in, the uh, in church? The same words that, that they get away with on TV, would you use these same words in church? I would hope not. I would hope not. I would hope not. But yet, let's see, here, here, here's the, here, here is the difference. We can, we can use certain words about homosexuals and on social media and we'll be taken off if we use these specific words about homosexuality. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be taken off. I'll give you an example of there, there was a man and it looked like he was it was photoshopped. Okay. But you know, back in the 1920s, and you can see uh, when they were building these skyscrapers, and men would be up on these, say, two by four pieces of wood walking, and they would be 
like 80 stories up with no nets, no harness, no nothing. Just a hard hat on. And it seemed like they were fearless. Well, anyway, there was a picture of a... Now, the caption said, a New York City police officer, and he's hanging off one of these beams in midair, joking around. But I had said that, wow, it looks like a... Now, it... It was not a police. It was not a New York City police officer uniform. I said it looked like um, um, a German, a German officer. Okay. Do you know that my comment was blocked just because I said that? It was blocked, and then I was given a warning by Facebook. A warning that what I said was offensive. All I said was it looked like a German uh, military officer, but that was deemed offensive. So do you get what I'm saying? So <laughs> but again, these so-called Christians, Um, pretty much allow themselves to be lied to by the devil when it comes to instances of what racism is. <clears throat> Again, 30 years ago, fast forward now, it's still the same. It is still the same. But here's the thing. You, me, we have to keep pushing forward on this. We have to keep the narrative going. Because from each year, little by little, people are backing down and people are... It's almost like Christianity is being watered down by people who call themselves Christians, but they're really not. Or people who call themselves Christians and they compromise all the time. And we're not to compromise God's word. We're to stand firm and strong on the name of Jesus, on the name of the Father, on the name of the Holy Spirit, and on the virtues of truth. And that's what this series has been about, truth. Revealing truth. Pulling truth from under the rug because it's been hidden under the rug for so many years. That's what this is about. That's what's going on. So, continue to watch the series. Continue to learn and grow from it. And as for you naysayers out there, why are you watching? Why are you checking it out? Because you know you can't resist truth. Yeah, you, you get mad at it, but you can't resist it. Enough said. <laughs>